With Lightfall just around the corner, and a new subclass called Strand being introduced, I want to show off one of the most popular build types that a lot of players like to fall to when the season starts to slow down, and that is the Poison build. Now, I know Poison as a subclass trait isn't a thing, it's more of a term people like to use when using weapons or solo, but its effects out in the field is more than strong enough to be classed as a subclass within itself. So, I thought, why not create some builds around it? So, here is three warlock builds based around weapon or solo's effects and how you can get the most out of them, both normal and endgame. Our first build is called Sorrow's Fire, as it's going to allow you to combine the effects of Scorch and Poison into one to create a green phosphorus effect that will keep on burning until nothing is left, but also giving you a nice tan. Combining Osteo's Trigger and Incinerating Snap will create a simple and fun build to use when you want to inflict the high losses on a large scale with two AoE dot effects combined into one. For this to work, it's going to rely on you using Heat Rise's secondary effect to stay in the air for longer, while also granting you additional melee energy. This melee energy with Incinerated Snap is going to allow you to spread Scorch on a wider area and thus spread its effects much faster compared to Celestial Fire, which is more designed for single targets. Also having Touch of Flame helps as you can utilize your solo grenades against bosses and build up stacks of Scorch, which can detonate and cause additional damage, but this is entirely up to you. Fragments such as Ember of Ashes which provides more score stacks, Ember of Torches which provides us with Radiant when we activate our charge melee, Ember of Benevolence provides class ability, grenade and melee energy when we make others Radiant, and Ember of Searing provides melee energy when defeating a Scorch target are very much useful towards enhancing the strength of the build, while also increasing the usefulness of the given solar weapon. As Osteo has the effect of Overlearn's magazine when spreading its effects to others, and Radiant can be procced multiple times, this means that you can take out much bigger enemies with few shots, and even use it as a DPS weapon against bosses at times. But to make the build how it is, you'll need mods, and the most beneficial mod you'll want will be both Charged with Light and Elemental Worlds. Melee Wallmaker and Balfour World is going to allow you to get back ability energy faster when using your charged melee. While taking charge and heavy handed is going to grant you half your melee energy back upon using your charged melee and being charged with light, these four mods are all you'll need for the build as nothing else compares to how often you'll be able to use your charged melee back to back. Also to note, make sure your strength stat and discipline stat is around 70 or more and both of these will be feeding into each other to achieve the end game goal of floating in the air for long and use your melee as often as you like. With everything combined into one, you'll get one of the most simplest mini solar builds that can build up stacks of Scorch within seconds of each other. But when combined with Osteo's trigger and its effects, you can nuke areas with both their effects with how successful they can be. The build does require you to jump as often as you can so you can get that bonus energy for peak prices, but because of how much support your mini is already getting from mods, fragments and aspects, you won't need to do this all the time, which is great if you want to take this into endgame. Let me tell you, this is a lethal build for solo users and you don't need to rely on other weapons to make it work, and just Osteo and your fast media together will allow you to dominate any content you have in mind with simple ease. Our next build is called a prickly situation as by the time your target tries to get away from you, it'll be too late. I have used Fallen many times in PvP because of how useful its dot effect is against players. But in PvE, there's never really been a time to overall use it as there's always something better to use. But now that not quite a grip and the subclass update have been introduced, it's allowed Fallen to expand this area of use from being a solo PvP weapon to now a PvE weapon as well. To make the Fallen extra prickly, we are going to need to use Void and rely on both our melee and grenades to achieve our goal of constant debuffs and making the Fawn's exotic effect even more stronger than ever. This is going to be an aggressive build that will allow you to retain your weapon strength and truly drain the life out of everything you touch. To achieve this goal, you're going to need to have Free the Void where defeating targets with Void abilities grant you Devour, and Child of the Old Gods where you can produce a Void Soul upon using Rift and use it to debuff, drain, and gather back energy from enemies. The aspects are going to allow you to get back your abilities fast, while also grant you constant health regen while you slowly take away your health from others, which fits the theme of the poison build pretty well. A fragments, you're going to want to have Echo Provision where damaging targets with grenades grant melee energy, 
Echo of Undermining for that 15% debuff for grenades, and Echo of Exchange where melee final blows grant grenade energy. This will of course leave you with one slot open, so feel free to add on whatever you like, such as Echo Remnants. The main three fragments we just mentioned are going to be linked into your discipline and strength, so you can rotate your abilities back and forth and keep things like Devour up for longer. This will also link back into your mods, which will help you elevate your abilities further by granting you extra ability energy and further damage buff on top of Thorn's Mark of Devour effect. Mods such as Elemental Ordnance and Mouth of Well combined with our subclass will allow easier uptime for grenade usage without needing to use key perks such as Demolitionist or Firepower mod. You can switch to Ordnance mod for a melee wallmaker mod instead, but the choice is down to you. The most important mod to have though is High Energy Fire and Heavy Handed, as these will help keep the build going while you aggressively play. High Energy Fire gives you 20% damage buff for all your weapons, and it's going to allow your form to hit even more harder once Soul Devourer is in full effect, while Heavy Handed, of course, is going to allow us to spam our charge melee more often. With everything combined, and your weapons or choice picked, you'll get an uber version of Thorn that's going to drain your health much faster and provide aggressive play against all targets you face. Although the reload and magazine size can be an issue at times, this can be overlooked thanks to the debuff of weapon enhancements being provided for a small cost in return. As long as you use your melee grenades one after another and create a rhythm behind them, you can sustain heavy damage without the need of heavy weapons involved. Add on top Necrotic Grip's poison effect that can proc and kills, or even hits, and you'll get a hand cannon that can really put the turn weapon or solo on full display. Our last build is purely a melee build on crack and involves the user to fully dive in head first and wish for the best. Our Charge Our Slide of Death build incorporates the Lightning Surge aspect and the Crotal Grip's Charge Mini to create a fruity 1 2 punch setup that will damage, jolt, poison, and everything else within a simple slide attack. When done right, you can wipe out a good chunk of enemies of mixed groups in one hit, and anything left over can be finished off with your Glaive of Choice, which can also prop poison dot damage just for extra measure. So to make this work, you're going to need to have a lightning surge where sliding and milling will teleport you forward and bring down a lightning strike near you. You'll also want electrostatic of mine so you can get those I want traces from our arc ability kills as well. For your fragments, I would recommend you have spark of resistance so you can get 25% damage reduction while surrounded, spark of beakers where arc special weapon final blows can blind surrounding targets, spark of ions where defeat and joy targets give you ion traces, and Sparkle Shock where Arc Grenade Jolt targets. All of these here are viable towards the setup as they're going to enhance your jolt capabilities while in the thick of things. Sparkle Feedback is also good for increasing your melee damage output further if you want to clean up areas in one hit. From here, you'll then want to follow the same setup as the other two builds with both Discipline and Strength stat being the main focus of the build. Elemental Ordnance and Powerful Well will both provide the given energy while on top of the Iron Traces collected, while Seeking Worlds is going to make collecting worlds a bit more easier while on the move. High Energy Fire, of course, is still going to be present within the build, as that 20% free damage buff towards all our weapons will go a long way. However, as we're using a Glaive, I would recommend you have the Passive Aggressive Guard mod for that 50% damage reduction being provided to you while you're using your Glaive. Because Glaives and Necrotic Grip now work with each other, you will not only get a huge damage reduction on top of the damage reduction you already got while guarding with said Glaive, but each kill made with a glaive will proc Necrotic Grip's effect non-stop. This means that once your charge melee is done and you've placed your first poison effect on the target, you can quickly switch to your glaive of choice and then go ham while pretty much being invincible in the making. It's insanely dumb how powerful you can be with everything in motion as you can easily solo a mass of your content with this alone and truly not worry about needing to heal constantly. However, as I like to play with safety in mind, I would highly recommend you use the Nezak Whisper Glaive for its matching elemental type, but also for its often trait, where it will give you health back on final blows near multiple combatants. If you can get a Nezarax with Demolitions and Vorpal on it, then you can truly redefine this build to master all enemy types as you can easily cover low, mid and high tier enemy types without needing to swap to your other weapons. Overall, a insane build that's worth its weight in gold and actually pretty fun to mess around with. So there we have it. I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. What did you think? Are these builds interesting for you to try out and go full blown Poison Master? Leave a comment below. 
While at the same time, if you enjoyed the content and want more of these videos in the future, then leave a like and a sub while here. If you want more stuff like this, then I have a playlist available covering all types of builds that you desire. But once again, it was great sharing today's video with you all. I hope to see you all again soon.